Hi there, how's it going? Um, I hope this finds you well since I last saw you in November. Um, I suppose this is my first time doing an online lecture, which I think I was telling you the last time. So um, I'm going to try my best. It's probably going to be a little bit of trial and error. Um, and I said just for this, the first couple of slides, I would put up my uh, face um, up on camera just so you um, remember the face behind the, the, the voice as well. So um, like I said last time, welcome to this module. I am teaching critical youth work theory and I hope um, throughout this module you, it will support you as a youth worker and also in this master's to basically do what it says on the can. Start thinking critically, start looking at things critically. Um, you know, in your work, in your writing, in your reading. Um, and I hope this module, along with the other modules, will, will, will start helping you to do one of those, one of, one of those is one of the key things that you will be doing, um, throughout this master's. So, um, without further ado, I will, I uh, start, have a look at what we out, what I outlined the last time in November and we'll get stuck in. So, um, I'd love to ask if there's any questions, but obviously I can't do that online and we will have to wait for the, the web tutorials. So let's get going. Okay, so um, the plan was that I would take the, the my face from the corner, but um, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. So I will um, figure that out for the next uh, the next section. So we'll, we'll go on anyway and move on. So what does this module aim to do for you? So like we talked about in November, this module aims to support students to understand various progressive sociological frameworks underpinning youth work. So when we're talking about sociology, sociological, we're talking about people, we're talking about society. So youth work is absolutely 100% obviously part of that. We're dealing with young people every day, we're dealing with adults every day, we're dealing with families. So how can we understand those better? So having a look at um, the various sociological frameworks, which a lot of you are, I, 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 from what I gather in November, a lot of you are very aware of the different sociological frameworks. And you've got a lot of, a lot of study done in this already, but we're going to start from that point and we're going to look at those frameworks just to get us thinking about how do they apply? Okay, so we might understand them in one context and we understand them in, you know, the broad, the broad essence of what they mean. But how do we apply them to youth work um, and in different youth work situations? So we're going to look at that and see how they can support us to understand youth work a little bit better. Um, this module also aims to support students to explore functionalism and conflict theory in youth work, reviewing different ontological, as you could see, and epistemological perspectives within these frameworks. So what I will say about that is so functionalism. Basically, it's um, it's a theory, it's it's a paradigm, a way of looking, a perspective, a way of looking at society in that we're made up, it looks at society as a whole, and that society is made up of different elements which work together in order for society to function. Now, that's the basic essence, that's the basic thinking behind functionalism. So how do we all, how are we all elements, how is society made up of elements in order for it to function um, in a certain way. So elements, you're talking about the people and that you're talking about the, the education, you're talking about politics. So things are certain ways um, in order to work together, in order to have society function in a certain way. Okay. Conflict theory. Again, that is what it says on the tin. So, tin. so um, it's, a, it's a perspective, a theory or that um, and Marx would have used this theory, um, uh, he, he would have been one of the founders of this theory. So conflict theory, that society is made up of conflicts, um, uh, conflicts and tensions, and that's how we move on in society. Um, it looks, it also looks at society as, um, you know, having particular, I suppose conflict theory looks at society being unevenly distributed, which Marx would have talked about quite a bit as well. So in regard to resources and power, so there's an uneven distribution of those within society. And these are what causes the conflict and the tension. OK, so um, this this module also supports students to focus on the radical humanist paradigm paradigm. There's lots of big words coming here at the moment. So just to get, I suppose it gives you a little bit of a base and a little bit of an introduction of, of what we're going to look into. So radical humanist paradigm, again, a radical, this is, this is a way of looking at society. Um, I suppose when you think of radical, you think of revolting and going up against and, um, uh, you know, 
I suppose, be like like it says, you know, being radical. So a radical humanist paradigm, again, is sort of trying to think differently, trying to oppose what is there. What, what can we do that's different, you know, and a radical humanist paradigm, you know, why is society made up the way it is and how can we challenge that, basically, in its essence. And then, again, like that, critical social education. And it's, pro you know, I would imagine it's what most of you do within your youth work teaching young people, teaching adults, um, working with young people, adults, people to um, ask questions, to uh, question what is out there, um, to educate, to education around um, being critical. What, you know, what do we know? Why do we know it? How do we know it? You know, who's told us this? What sort of political frameworks are there that are shaping the way that we are thinking okay so critical social education i would have done that throughout um my time working in youth work um ask ask the questions ask the questions that prompts the questions within the young people themselves so um to continue on then support students to focus on these its values and implications for youth work policy and practice so i hope that makes sense to you it's in a in a nutshell it's trying to get people trying to get young people to ask questions and think outside the box i suppose if you're putting it blatantly um, comparing it to other approaches critically analyzing and developing their own personal perspectives and values and that's what i hope that throughout this module and throughout the masters that you're going to develop a way of looking at things and questioning things that you know um saying to yourself and saying to to, to your co to your co-workers to your co-students why are we doing this? Why am I doing this as a youth worker? And for me, that process has happened 120% um, as I have been going through my own research, um, my own PhD, um, what are youth workers' perspectives on professional youth work. So throughout the past four or five years that I've been working on that, I've gone through a whole process of questioning everything, not only in youth work, but in how society is shaped, um, how we work within society, why we work why we do what we do within society, why organizations are set up the way they are. And hopefully you will go through that process as well over the next couple of years and have already possibly more than likely been going through that process as well as workers, as students in other in other um, environments. So, um, yeah. So, like I said the last time, by the end of the module, you should be able to demonstrate an ability to critically analyze a range of sociological frameworks, show critical awareness, of the radical human, radical humanist paradigm show that they've developed show that you have developed your capacity to analyze critical social education as a framework for undertaking youth work and like i said about critical social education you're already doing this this is just going to give you a way of this is going to give give you the ability to name it and to do something with it and when someone asks you what are you doing as a youth worker this you in in a split second you could say well actually i use a critical social education approach with the young people that i'm working with and like i said this is possibly a lot of this isn't new to you so hopefully we can just delve a bit deeper and progress the learning you already have around some of these concepts but like i said i'm trying to i suppose start that everyone is on the same same as a, 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 is at the same starting point we've all you know some people a lot of you might know about critical social education might know about um, radical humanist paradigm functionalism conflict theory but you know what it's no harm to just lay it out at the beginning and start thinking about it we might have learned about it a few years ago it might be fresh in our heads but it's no harm to just start from that starting point again um also hopefully you'll be in a position and this is exactly what i'm what i'm saying you'll be in a position to clearly articulate your values and epistemology don't worry about words like ontology and epistemology We'll go through this um, um, in the second section of this lecture, okay? So we'll, and again, I'm aware that some of you um, would know the definition of ontology and epistemology, but uh, I'll make it clearer as, as we move on in the second part of this lecture. So, um, like I said, be in a position to clearly articulate your values and epistemology with regard to youth work and to constructively critique the position of others. So it's not, you know, it doesn't mean be critical and I suppose you know um how we traditionally think of the word critical so it's critiquing so it's being constructive it's you know saying well, why do we do that and how do we do that and could we do it a bit differently could we do it in a better way so that's essentially what that's saying and then that you're able to demonstrate an ability to critically analyze the implications of neoliberalism we talked about that a little bit the last day so neoliberalism 
um, talks about you have the theory and you have the political um, the political perspective on it. So neoliberalism basically advocates for a free market and that everything is for sale. And it advocates for, as we, I think all of us know in youth work at the moment, um, you know, it advocates for business frameworks to be applied to everything, as we can see is quite a common trend, common um, into youth work at the moment and has been has been particularly common within English British youth work um, over the past few years as well and then managerialism then as one of the consequences of that and how is managerialism how can we see that as a whole within society at the moment and it is a consequence of neoliberalism and how do we see it at the moment within youth work how is managerialism manifesting itself um, so we have these things called we have youth work managers. What do they look like? How should they look like? Should a youth work manager be the same as a manager within a business um, sector? You know, and, and how do we start thinking about that as youth workers? How should that work? Do there need to be managers? And if so, uh, what should they look like? So this module is for one semester. It's for 10 weeks and you will have an hour a week, um, an hour a week with me on this module. And I know you'll have two other hours as well uh, with Paul and Lisa on their modules. So, uh, but with me, you will have me one hour a week um, when you log into your Moodle here. So, So continuing on, so just really briefly, again, just to set out from the starting point, what is a lecture and what's a tutorial? I said this the last time. So a lecture delivers the information. So this is the lecture. So I'm literally going to be talking, um, talking and showing you different YouTube clips for, um, you know, the, the hour or so. Um, and there obviously there's there's not um, any interaction between the two of us, which, again, is a very um, funny place i suppose for for a youth work module but hopefully um you will you will get the information here i will provide you with the information and then any questions you have any thoughts that come into your head because of the lecture or through the quizzes that you do um or the readings that you look at that i'll provide every week and lisa and paul will provide every week um you will be able to um ask questions then within the the tutorial so obviously we'll have an online tutorial which will probably be myself or paul that would be attended that and, and and through that tutorial then we can have that that interaction and that engagement with each other it's 100 percent ca um it's an essay as you know um there'll also be a series of questions which i talked about there'll be a quiz after each section of of um the lecture so after this 15 minutes now you'll have a, a quiz to go through um, and then there will be the cross modular project and no exam so we're at the beginning therefore i will outline the following so we have the same starting point so like i said um why i'm why i'm going to look at sociology and just the basic tenets of sociology is because um is because so we're at the same starting point um, some students may be aware of these definitions, definitions while well, others may not, and that's what I'm trying to um, work through. So sociology is the scientific study of human life, social groups, whole societies, and the human world as such. It ranges from analysis of passing encounters between individuals on the street to the investigation of international relations. So you're basically looking at society, like I said when I was explaining the different paradigms. You're looking at people, how is society set up, how, are in, what, how do individuals work, and how do individuals, in particular, how do individuals work within society? How are we all connected? Encourage us to see the world beyond ourselves, um, our individual lives, and reflect the context of our social experiences. So, like I said, I won't I won't touch too much into C. Wright Mills. I talked about him the last day, but I would advise for you to look at the the article that I've put up um, that he wrote, the sociological imagination, and this will help you hopefully get your head around what the sociological what sociology is about, and that even in the most personal and individual moments, we're all connected. And how how do we think about that maybe in a youth work context? And that structure is society is structured and it structures our lives, regardless of whether we think you know we have the freedom to do this we have the freedom to do that but at the same time it also ha it always also and always has consequences for society as a whole okay so for people for other people so like that thanks for listening to me for this first um 15 minutes um so i'd ask you now to please attempt the quiz on moodle um and um yeah we leave it there thanks very much and i will talk to you again in a few minutes